guys, welcome back to the creation of the Oasis at Modern Design Aquascaping. We are turning my regular old boring mundane vinyl siding house into one of the most amazing aquatic experiences you are ever going to get to see. I appreciate you guys hanging out with the Adams family. In the next three episodes, you're going to see a lot of stuff going on. The guys are putting in the wetland filter where you're going to see a test run on the color changing lights. You're going to see a test run on the fountain. I myself, I need to go on a walkabout so that I don't make all of my people crazy. I take off on a journey. I'm going to visit several of my friends that have these recreation ponds at their homes so that I can remind myself in here why I am doing this madness at my own house. I appreciate you guys joining us on our journey. Stay tuned and enjoy the next three episodes of the creation of the Oasis at Modern Design. We are way into this wetland at this point. I'm sure you guys have already seen clips of what's going on in here, but we just want to take a little bit of time to explain what we're doing, why we're doing it, and a couple things that might make or break you guys along the way if you're tackling a project like this by yourself. So we are using 76 small aqua blocks in here. The reason we're using smalls is because a wetland isn't necessarily for water storage. It's really about the surface area and the amount of aggregate or river stones that you were going to put on top of this thing to get your maximum filtration out of it. So you can see it's a pretty large footprint that we got, but if you've only got a couple inches of gravel in there, you could minimize this hole down to a third of the size and put two feet of that stuff and get the same amount of filtration. That being said, we're not minimizing the hole, we're just using a crap load of aggregate instead. So we're getting the maximum that we can out of this. You can see our trench running through the middle. That is for said centipedes. Those guys are what run along there. Water goes in through the little hole in the front, but on the far side, disperses all the way through these and then slowly rises evenly up through the aqua blocks and then up through the different layers of aggregate, providing the best filtration that pretty much get on this thing to keep our water running clear and beautiful all the time. So Chico. Yes, sir. Why? Why did we dig this hole this size? How did we get here? We dug the hole bigger. So when you're measuring, most people will measure from the top and when you're measuring from the top and then you dig in an incline, and when you go to dig your, to add your aqua blocks, now you're too small. And so when you do your measurement, after you do your excavation, make sure that you're doing your measurement from your bottom so that as you're setting your aqua blocks, you know that you're getting the right, the right angle. Make sure that you're at least level on your walls so that you're straight. But we went ahead and did about a foot extra. Yeah. Yeah. just to have wiggle room to adjust and to, and then we'll backfill with gravel uh, as needed, you know. Mm -hmm. That's about the point we're to. So we've got everything checked. We've got it graded nicely. So it's weird having the snorkel in the middle. We don't like to put them off to one side because we set boulders all around the edges. And the last thing we want is a boulder edge to be defined by said snorkel. Snorkels, this thing. This is our snorkel. So by putting this thing in the middle, we have actually changed grade from the snorkel this way and this way to where this half slopes down towards it, this half slopes down towards it. So when you're doing a clean out, so you want to spend time on the front end to make sure maintenance is easy later on, because if this were all graded away from the snorkel, you would have pools of fish poop. I don't know what else to call it. Pool of fish poop, decomposing plants, all that good organic debris that builds up in the vacuum bag or wetland filter of the pond would be nice and trapped in both corners and unable to be cleaned out. And it's already going to be quite a lengthy process to clean this giant wetland filter. So really taking the time to get the bottoms graded out right to where it all goes to that snorkel for clean out purposes on the front end is a big thing. Because can you just imagine tearing this wetland out and regrading the bottom? No, no one's ever going to do that. They're just going to spend extra time cleaning that thing out every single year, and it's going to suck. It's going to be horrible. Been there, done that. Don't do it. So that being said, we're pretty much ready to get our rock pad in here. We are using rock pad. We'll get this stuff in, and then we have just a few aqua blocks that we need to assemble after we get our liner and stuff in to get this ball rolling, and hopefully we'll be on to boulders. Eventually, we'll, we'll get there. Fun part. So, all technicalities for now. We're, we're almost done. 10 foot 7, not a big deal. 10 foot 4. 10 foot 7. 10, 10, 11. <laughs> yep. Well, if we want a foot extra on each side, we should be fine. But it's sucking This has way extra because yeah. we're way the heck here. Yeah. Your blocks are. Yeah, we're, 
we're golden. We're good to go. Let's like rake this out and get it kind of flat. Smack it with the tamper. We gotta smack the hole down there with the tamper too. Tamp it up. What we're doing before we put our rock pad in, now that we know everything is dug where we want it, we've got everything leveled the way we want it, we know our centipedes fit in here, so we're actually gonna bring over aqua block panels, not even fully assembled aqua blocks, and we are gonna lay all of this stuff in here as if the liner and underlayment was in there. And the reason we're doing this is because with a liner this size, it's a heavy piece of liner. It takes a while to get it spread out just the way you want it. And the last thing you want is to get all your geo and your rock pad and your liner in here and everything looking good. You start shuttling your blocks in and then you get to an edge. You realize that your blocks don't fit because something is off in your hole. So that being said, what we do as part of our practice every single time without fail is before we ever put the geo or the liner in this hole, we bring over our panels, we lay out what it's gonna look like based off our measurements and what we had plans for. So we're four by 19 aqua blocks is what we've got going. Four long this way and then 19 heading this way short ways. So we're gonna lay these panels in here, lay the snorkel centipedes, everything that's gonna go in here is gonna be in here before we get that material in so that we know for a fact by the time we get our liner and geo and everything spread out in here, it is all going to unfold perfectly and everything is gonna fit just the way it needs to fit because we double checked before we went through the hassle of getting it all in there. So that being said, Chico is sh shuttling panels right now. He is going to get those. We're gonna lay it out in here, make sure we're golden. And then finally, we can put our geo and our liner in. We can actually get rocking. much no end to what you can do with an aqua block. You can do anything True. you want. You can be anything you want if you have enough aqua blocks. <laughs> 38, 39. Pretty close.
two and a half inches of water, inch and a half of flagstone, that's four inches. And we want 12 inches of water, so we need to build up eight inches above snorkel top. That'll get us to the shelf level we need to be for flagstone. There we go. I haven't been snorkeling in a while. A little warmer than I remembered. Not very mobile. Buddy Dave's. I was there for two days and uh, actually tried to help him save his fish. What were what was left of them? What were left of them? Um, something bad was going on there in his pond, and he had been losing some. I did jump in his pond, took caught a fish, did some scrapings, but uh, he was having issues with his microscope anyway, so that didn't really turn out to find anything at that point. So. On day two, I just got up in the morning. He and his wife stayed out late at some tennis party they had, and I got up early and just hit the road. And uh, I headed east again, and I headed out to Southport. I got another friend that, that has a place on Oak Island, which was already rented, but he also lives in Southport. So I thought I might come by and catch him. He happens to be out of town for the weekend, so look like that's not gonna happen. So what I decided to do was, I got on Airbnb, and I found this rental for a luxury yacht. And so I decided that I'd take a chance and see what that looks like. And man, I got out here, it turns out that uh, the boat's pretty dirty. 
they weren't expecting somebody. The owners took off and went to uh, Florida for the weekend. So I just sort of got a last minute uh, reservation out here. Whoever was here last, their dirty towels are here. The boat's about half ass cleaned. Super musty smelling down in the cabin. It's about 85 degrees inside there. I can't even go down in there and, and get into the area. The AC doesn't seem to be working. Guys, you can't make this shit up. I'm not kidding you. It's like I am being challenged. This part of my journey to find my inner soul. This is just real, real time, real stuff. And I want to share it with you all and uh, let you know that man, everything isn't all uh, roses and sunshine and all that crap. It's just another day in the salt mines as my good buddy joe says so anyways i'm gonna opt out on this i'm gonna make the best of this whole situation i'm gonna soak up some uh, salt spray tomorrow morning i'm gonna go out clear my head and i'm gonna walk on the beach in oak island and i'm gonna see if i can walk till my legs fall off so that's my goal hopefully i'll get some good food and uh, have a couple of cold beers and it'll cool down enough to get a little sleep tonight and uh, tomorrow i'm gonna go walking and but uh I don't know it's just this is what it's all about i said i was coming out here to clear my head and uh here i am i'm gonna get off here and do something else besides this john g out they left me a dinghy and some little moldy thing to ride on <laughs>